Hey, we're Chris and Jody from Love and the Outcome. Welcome to our podcast. It's been a minute, but we're still the same husband and wife rocking out on the road. Our kids are a little older, six and seven, and we're still living this crazy life with Christ at the center, but we like to keep our toes right on the edge. We haven't checked in in a while, but a lot has happened. Our house flooded three years ago, and it's totally shifted our perspective on God, on family, and just how we interact with other humans. Hey, we wrote a song called Human, and that's what this episode is all about. Grab a cup of coffee, sit back, hope you enjoy the story behind our new song, Human. You're not broken just because you're wounded. You're still worth it when your own turns to ruins. Sometimes you climb a mountain, you thought it was gonna move. God may not take your pain, but you know he will take it through. You win, you lose, you fall, you get some bruises. That just means you're human. Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. It's been a minute. We're so glad to be back doing this with you. It's been a minute. (laughs) It's been a minute. We have been through it over the last three years. I'm sure you have too. You know, when your house floods and all your podcasting gear floods, you take a break. (laughs) That's right. That is an accurate way to say it. You just take a break. (laughs) We took a break from a few things to make space for insurance um, and just kind of getting our life back on track after surviving living in five different places out of suitcases for the last couple of years. <laughs> my, my memory was like that we had just like stopped everything all at once, but like uh-huh. we actually kept this going for a while. We did even in different locations and we somehow made it work. And then, wow. And then it just got to a point where it's like, okay, my brain is full. Uh, yeah. Well, let's just pause this for a second, but we have something new. Yeah. That is very exciting to share. So that's why um, it's like, this is a good way to get the word out. Let's start it up again. So we wrote a song (laughs) right after we got settled in an apartment for a year after our house flooded. We hadn't written any songs. We took a break from songwriting. How do you write songs in the middle of just kind of survival mode? And so we booked a session with two new friends And uh, we decided, okay, I think we're ready to write a song. Sat down on the couch, and our friend Jonathan Gamble, who was producing and co-writing in the session, said to us, so how have you guys been? How are you doing? And the first thing that popped out of my mouth was, whew, God is good, but life is hard. (laughs) Life has been so hard. And he's like, well, tell me about that. And we started to just tell him our story of, survival mode and showing up for our life in the middle of such a, I guess, suffering season. A season of hell? Yeah, season of hell. And I think as professional Christians, um, Chris and I have gotten really good over the last 10 years of our life at wrapping everything in a neat and tidy bow and using Christian cliches from the stage and trying to be honest, not faking it, but honesty still looked like putting sort of a bit of a a toxic positivity on top of all of our hard things. Well, because we're used to being on stage and, um, and having a set list and having a beginning and a middle and an ending. And it's like every night has a beginning and an ending. Yep. But this, this season just seems like it is kind of never ending. (laughs) It's true. Our house flooded in the middle of the pandemic, that first really intense wave. All our shows were canceled and our family lives in Canada. So nobody was here to sort of lean on. You couldn't move into your parents' basement. And, um, and then the house flooded and it just all was a big metaphor. Looking at our broken house was a metaphor for our broken lives And I promise you that we still have, this is the most unmotivating motivational podcast you've ever heard. You're about to turn us off. Don't, please don't turn us off. I mean, when I say never ending, it's like, sure, our our house is bad. Like that part ended, you know, like the the destroyed house part ended and now we're in basically a brand new house. Um, but, But, But wouldn't you trade our brand new house to not have had to have gone through any of those things? I think so, but I think that is <laughs> that is the crux of the suffering mm-hmm. 
the, you know, what is the meaning of suffering? Yeah. So back to the song, life is hard, God is good. That became the first line of our song. And we just basically did what you just said. We unpacked suffering. Is that the first thing you said to Jonathan? Yeah, that's the very first thing that I said. And he literally like sat down on his computer and started typing. He's like, this is our song. We have to write this song. And I think what we wanted to share with you guys is like, yes, it's a song, but it's not a song like we've written before. It's not attached to an album yet. It's not part of a pitch or a big campaign. It's really just a song and story of showing up for our lives in the middle of suffering and an encouragement to you that you can do the same thing. And not through the encouraging things we used to say, not by picking yourself up by the bootstraps, not by soldiering on, not by having more faith. Oh, you mean cliches? Right. Not in those ways. What we realized in this season is that, and this song, it's sort of rewriting what we think is encouraging. Re, I, I loved how you said it this morning, rewiring. Yeah, rewiring. What you think is encouraging. Because we've all sort of been programmed to just, when we're uncomfortable, when we're in a conversation or a setting where someone is grieving or someone is hurting, when we get really uncomfortable as human beings, we just kind of throw these phrases out without meaning to be rude or insincere. We just don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. So we pull out these verses we've heard, like the Romans passage that, you know, God works everything for the good. And we say it with this smile on our face and a pat on the back to our friend who's hurting. When really that just makes the friend who's hurting feel like sort of like their pain isn't valid. Or like there, there's no room for grief in the gospel when in fact there's three books of the Bible on grief. So there absolutely is room in the gospel for grief. Right. Has any people group in history been more oppressed <laughs> than the Jews? Truly. And every Psalm of David starts out with the grief and the whining and the groaning and the anger. And so I think what we've realized in the rewiring of our brains and in writing this song in this season is that sometimes just telling the whole truth is the most encouraging thing. Like, God is good all the time. Yeah, that's true. What is also true is that life is really hard sometimes, most of the time, and we're human. That's also true. So I think holding two things at the same time and saying two things can be true at the same time That was where the exhale came from for me, I think, and for you too, to go, oh man, like I'm not a bad Christian for going through a really tough season. Like my worth and my value is not based on how well my life is going. Huh. Okay, phew. And God's goodness is not based on how good my life is going. Because sometimes we've done that, right? We attach God's goodness to this like sort of perfect life. So what do you do when you're the person who is a Christian and is suffering and their life isn't going the way they thought that it would? How do you keep living your life when you're in the middle of just really, really dark, hard times? And throwing a Christian cliche at someone's not going to help them, but there are some things that will. Well, for (laughs) us, it begins with a song. A song, exactly. That's that's kind of one form of therapy. Um, Another form of therapy is actually therapy. (laughs) Um, going to therapy. <laughs> Point number one, if you, you are going through a hard time or you're not therapy. Yeah. Um, you have been, um, you've been a real champ at mm. kind of embracing that side of things and realizing that I am not healthy right now. My brain is not healthy mm. and I have only recently realized that. So, <laughs> um, you were too busy sorting out insurance, which just got sorted out last week after three years. Yeah. As we are recording this podcast, the day before we recorded this, I got a call from our insurance that everything was about to be squared away. Yeah. And we've been waiting for, um, a significant amount of money for over a a year. A really long time. Yeah. I'm proud of you, babe. You know, sometimes You just, you can't, there's no space in your brain or your life in the middle of survival to, to know how to get healthy. But now that we're, and I know that part of my first session, I say, yeah. And I say that with knowing the privilege, how privileged that sounded and how privileged that is. I mean, 
I think one of the big wake up calls for us and suffering is a wake up call, like going through pain, deep suffering and deep love. That's very C.S. Lewis. And very Richard Rohr. I think that that's what he says, right? Deep pain, deep, deep love. Those are the two transformative forces in all of our human lives. I'm going to get it wrong. So all of you Narnia files, just, just (laughs) keep, keep it at bay. But what, what did Lewis say? Pain is God's megaphone. Yeah. I mean, truly. And I think going through this flood um, with all of our neighbors, so everyone down our street, we've all elevated our homes because we're white people with credit cards, most of us, and or just have a certain amount of privilege. And a lot of people behind us um, don't have that same privilege. And they were living under their cars. They were not able to find the resources cobble together the resources to fix up their houses they just moved back into mold and i think something about this shout season, out to the red cross though yeah for real yeah when you don't have a credit card you can't uber to a hotel like when you live off of cash and not speaking english you're you know you're limited in how yeah you can, i mean we had, we had never really seen that no like, we hadn't that mobilization happens so close to like literally behind our house behind our house yeah and yeah so just inspiring so yeah. Thank you, Red Cross. Thank you, Red Cross. We we are so grateful to see you in action. And just, I think, maybe a challenge off the top of the podcast, like what we've challenged ourselves with is we've never really seen life the same way again since going through this really hard season and watching people continue to live in a hard place. And it's changed the way we live and love and spend our money. Um, and yeah, I think that's the beginning of... <laughs> For us, it was the beginning of the undoing of Christian cliches because you can't look at somebody who has cancer and has gotten it again and again and again. You can't look at someone living under their car who went through a flood and doesn't have the resources to fix their house. You can't look at them and say, when God closes a door, he opens a window. No, in their life, God didn't open a window. God just continues to hold their hand. You know. I know you're saying these as examples, but every one that you're saying is just like, my body is just like gets triggered every time I hear it. Cause we've like, heard them so many times. Right. <laughs> and this is not us being like, people are ridiculous. We say that, well, no, we are. And we are including ourselves in that saying like, we just say silly things when we're uncomfortable. And if there's one takeaway from this podcast, it's that it's okay to just say how you're feeling. It's okay to say, I hate this for you. Like I, I would do anything to change what you're going through. Like, this sucks. Like that just feels talking about rewiring what encouragement looks like. That feels so much more encouraging. Mm. We all just want to feel seen and loved. We want to feel seen and we want to feel loved. We don't want to be told prescriptions of how to fix our lives. We don't want to be given three steps to the perfect life. We just want to like have real talk with real people. And that's what God wants with us too. Like God isn't sitting there going, glad you asked Jode how to fix your life. I've got a couple of verses and a, a, you know, a sermon, a three point sermon. Like, no, God's like the way I feel God and hear God and sense God is, I promised I'd be with you. There's something about, and I think this is why we've chosen this path, but there's something about listening to music that makes it feel like you're not being talked down to. Yeah. It's just, uh, that's right. It, it, it's somehow like if a speaker or, a you know, wh- whatever authority figure telling you what to do is like on this level, then music is kind of like, <laughs> just kind of like this where like it, a soundtrack with you through it's all the so things. much more, it, it's just so much easier to engage with. Yeah. Well, and, and that's a good point because we've especially never... Especially when it's your singing voice. Well, that's sweet. <laughs> you, have, you have a bias, but I'll take, <laughs> I'll take the compliment. No, I have a bass. <laughs> bias. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> good one. Good dad joke. Um, yeah, I think we've always seen our podcast, our songwriting, my speaking, everything we do from a communication perspective as invitational. We've never seen it as yes. it's conversational and invitational, not preaching, not um, telling you how to live your life because you have your life and you have your story. We have our story. And I feel like the best way to 
have great conversations and grow is to stay curious about each other's stories. And so this song human is letting you into our story. And, um, I think something we've said a lot over the last little while is you don't become a Christian and grow out of being a human. (laughs) It's like, there's a difference between, you know, we're all transforming, but the way we transform to become more like Christ is often through our pain and our suffering. And so you can't grow and transform without some pain. Right. And I wish I had a better answer for you on this podcast, but so far in my life, I, I don't. And so the story behind our song is just like, man, living your life and not hiding forever. There may be a season when if you're going through a hard thing where you need to hide for a bit and just survive, but then continuing to show up to your everyday life and letting people know, like what I told Ziggy today when he asked me how my day was going, like Ziggy, I'm tired, but I'm trying any way you can relearn how to just be a human being who's a Christian and doesn't rely on spouting verses and cliches at people to communicate and encourage. That's what this podcast is for. Just the chorus of the song says, you're not broken just because you're human. You're still worth it. When your Rome has turned to ruins, sometimes you climb a mountain. You thought God was going to move. God may not take your pain, but he'll take you through. You win, you lose, you fall, you get some bruises. That just means you're human. And so just hear us saying from our story, from our hearts to yours, like the bruises, the pain, the times you feel like you're, you're failing, you know, that's just part of being a human being on this planet. And God sent his son to put on flesh and blood, like it says in the message and move into the neighborhood. I mean, Jesus knows and knew how it felt to walk around in a human body and to feel what you feel. And you just, you don't need to fake it. You don't need to buy more anti-aging cream. Although I do, um, you know, we're allowed to age, we're allowed to be human. And that doesn't mean we're not becoming more Christ-like. We are humans transforming hopefully into a more loving version of ourselves. So man, what are other Christian cliches that we should just point out right now that we should all just decide never to use again? What did you hear the most, babe? (laughs) I mean, everything happens for a reason. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Don't worry. Every babe, everything happens for a reason. You're going to understand it one day. God is going to show you. Yeah, there's a lot of rewiring that has to uh, happen for that one to not be front. I mean, it's still it's still there. Like, yeah, it's like one of those kind of like if you're playing pinball and does anyone play pinball anymore? I don't know, but Hmm. you know, send us a DM if you play pinball. It's one of those like really those the the bumpers that the ball always hits. It's just like it can't can't help but hit that every time. Yeah, it's just rejection. Like full on rejection. Right. So what do you, what could we say instead of everything happens for a reason? What, if you're tempted to say that for someone who's listening and goes, oh man, I, say, I said that yesterday. It's okay. You're still an amazing person. Here, here's a one you could try instead. I think I was supposed to ask you this question. Okay. How about just say everything <laughs> happens. That's what Kate Bowler, my favorite Winnipegger always says she she rewrote the podcast says everything happens for a reason crosses it out everything happens because that's what it is that's good. everything happens and I'm so sorry this is happening God is good life is hard yeah sometimes life sucks that's right another one I heard a ton was um there's an, I'm gonna get the verse wrong but people said to me a lot like um nothing is wasted in kingdom currency God doesn't waste anything what's what you're going through is nothing compared to the glory ahead of you that God has for you, for those who seek him. And it's like, um, that's just plain old, not true. Like things are lost. Hmm. Things are lost. People are lost. People are lost. We've all experienced lost. My wood floors, I lost them. The originals never coming back. You know, we've got great floors now, but they're not what we had. They're gone forever. You know, it just, it's not a full truth. It's like a half truth. Like, Sure. You know, God doesn't waste our pain. God is always transforming us and helping us through our circumstance and, and helping us grow. 
But that's a totally different thing to say than like nothing's wasted in the kingdom. It's like that just like is another another it one of those. Just, it's sort weird of like ones. ignoring the fact that part of being human is having feelings. And right. I think a Thanks. lot of thank you. Say it again. Part of being human is having feelings. And, and admitting I think, I think, our feelings. Well, and I think most of my um and, and I'm not putting this on my parents or anything, but I think most of just my cultural upbringing is yeah. just um, in in church is your feelings don't matter. Your feelings right. are not valid. Right. Just slap a verse on your pain and keep going. And just pray. And just pray. And, and you should pray. You should pray. And you should memorize verses. What you should also do is cry your eyes out, beat hard on a pillow or get by a punching bag. Um, or a close drum. Your, close yourself in the, or a drum. <laughs> Thank you. Close yourself in the closet and put yourself in a timeout when you're about to lose it and just do some deep breathing. You know, I think another, the biggest line for me at the end of the chorus is, you know, when God doesn't move the mountain, you've been praying for God to move. You know, as if you're a Christian listening to this podcast, you've heard a million and one worship songs that say, God moves the mountains. Where's the song that says, well, when God doesn't move the mountain, here's how you can still worship. Because sometimes the mountain doesn't move. And that's what this song, this is a song about God didn't move your mountain. That one, that one might not move into top 10. CCLI. It might not. We're not, we're not really good at writing top 10 songs right now, but we're good at writing songs for people that need to feel seen and understood in the middle of their hard, hard season. And we got you. We're we got here. You. We're here for that. So... Yeah, when God doesn't move the mountain, God still wants to walk with you through your pain. I'll say this pretty loud because I've said it to myself a lot. Christianity is not meant to be escapism. Like we're not supposed to just like put a verse on our pain and escape our problems and forget that they're there or try and pretend that they're not. Like God wants to go through with you. And so we've basically written a song to say, we see you. We know that life can be hard, but we also know the goodness of God. And it's a song about both of those things and the fact that you don't have to outrun your humanity. God wants you as you are, the transforming, curious, growing human being that you are, that gets it wrong, that gets it right. You're who God wants. Hope you enjoy the song. And we might start it up again for a few more episodes. So rate and review, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends that need to be seen and heard and valued in the middle of hard things. We love y'all. You're still one.